purposely and gone. Kimo Paul, the youngster, strikes. Kimo Paul, not on strike. Boom! The man from Saxa Cali. He is so exciting, so young. Here we go, Kimo Paul back into the attack here. Donsky, there it is! Our Kimo, it's been a while since we've chatted. It's been a while since you've been able to talk something positive about cricket. I'm uh, going to get to that part about you and your injuries, but how is it? How is it being back home for just a short period before another hectic schedule? Oh, well, yeah, first of all, to be back home is really, really good. You know, I was looking forward to, to coming back home and spending some time with my family and my daughter and wife, especially. So, uh, what can I say? It's really good to be home. I want to top into that before I get into anything about cricket. I know you're a big family guy uh, from Saxakali and even the the Wake and Arm crew. Cricket, first of all, tell people how hard it is uh, to have to be on your road so long and not to get any time to spend with your loved ones. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, it's a conversation me and my wife have constantly, you know. I mean, it's an understanding because it's not easy being away from your family um, for months on the road, you know, and not just being away from your family, but going to different countries, different cuisines, different stuff, everything is very hard to adapt to. So you have to make it work for you. But coming back to the, the family point, man, what, like sometimes I get emotional, you know, like you get a kid, sometimes you're barely at home for a few weeks in however long, I, I didn't even know it's, it's too tough to explain, to be honest. Yeah, and with a newborn, especially the, the emotions, maybe even more, uh, you know, you want to be there as a father uh, to see her grow, that, that, that's even tough. Yeah, it's very tough. I mean, when my daughter was born, I probably spent two weeks with her and then I had a uh, franchise cricket to go and play. So, I mean, inside that was really tearing me up to be away from my family, you know? So, life is all about challenges and, I mean, yeah. How much does that affect what happens on the field? Uh, maybe not the clarity you would want in, in, in your head mentally, knowing that sometimes you're really longing to be home. Uh, does, does that play into how a player would perform on the field? Um, well, I, I could speak for me. Um, whenever it's game time, I try to be as focused as possible. You know, like I try to switch on and just be in my zone whenever it comes to cricket. So I wouldn't say it bothers me so much as in game time, but the moment the game finishes or whatever, you go back into that mindset of missing your family, you know, missing everything. But once the game is ready, once the game starts, everything disappears and it's just all about cricket. Yeah. Talking about game, uh, you haven't been on the field that much since you've probably returned from early long early off with injuries. Maybe the good thing about your injury period was I had coincided with COVID. So there wasn't a lot of cricket uh, being played. Uh, but since February, uh, back in South Africa, I've already played a lot of cricket. Uh, speaking to uh, Jimmy Adams, uh, he, he indicated that you wanted to play in UAE to ensure you get more uh, match time under your belt. You're really looking to groove yourself back into international cricket. Cricket West Indies especially the selectors speak very highly of you as a key part of their uh, their plans going forward. Uh, tell me about how you're looking to groove yourself back into more, much more international cricket. Well, yeah, I mean, like you said, my last ODI that I represented West Indies was probably way back in July. Yeah, I think so. I haven't uh, played for West Indies in a while, but I've been playing franchise cricket uh, constantly and. I'm really excited to be back in, in West Indies colors again. And I mean, I think that I'm ready now more than even when I made my debut, you know, I just, I just want to go there and, and make an impact. So, um, like you said, I, I told them that I wanted to play the UAE series because, you know, I was with uh, LSG in the IPL and I mean, I didn't play. So I wanted to make sure going into the World Cup qualifiers, I had game time on under my belt so that was one of the big reasons for me requesting to go and play the UAE series you know instead of spending probably 10 more days home with my family because coming to the World Cup I want to be ready 
I want to perform, I want to make an impact. So that was the reason behind that. How hard it is for you to sit out for that period? And I know it, it was COVID and there was even some periods before uh, with injuries. You're a player that, that everyone speaks of going more than 100%, but then sometimes your body uh, doesn't uh, go to that extent as well. Mentally, you know, how, how, how you've battled to battle with that one? Oh, well, I mean, I think it, it comes down to all about understanding myself and my body. And I'm at a point now where I totally understand my body and myself and know when to push, how hard to push and stuff like that. You know, like you said, I normally always want to give 110%. Mm -hmm. And sometimes my body, my body don't, don't react to that, you know, and I get injured. And sometimes I would be carrying niggles. And like you said, I just can't hold back. I go all out and it just makes the injury even worse. So I think now I understand myself really really good and like i said i know when to push i know how hard to push and like that's a big factor for me you know not not i don't want to keep getting injured like that so i'm at a stage where i know my body completely you know we were speaking about it just earlier in terms of the injuries and, and wanting to push your body providing for your family it, it, it's a big thing um how much does that play into you and, and when you, you and I noticed at times you would have been injured and you still push yourself through. How much is that knowing at the end of the day, you have mouths to feed, you have people are looking to you to take care of them. Does that, and does that play into you still going out and trying to, 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 to play cricket when maybe you shouldn't? Um, well, I mean, the financial factor and the financial gains is always a, a big uh, boost, I would say, you know, and I would say it does it does play in, but also wanting to represent and wanting to be on the park and, and be in the thick of things also, that contributes also. So it's not just the financial aspect, it also comes down to, to you and you know the pride that you, you put behind what, what you're doing. Maturity would say that, that, that has allowed you to, to learn more about your body and how best to, to manage it? Definitely. I think um, as you said, maturity is a big factor in the, like, I mean, I know my body really well now, you know. I know when to push, I know how hard to push. I know to take care of my body, I know what needs to be done. I know what I have to do before matches, after matches, you know, because there's so much more that goes on mm. off, off the field yeah. rather than on the field, you know. Like, after matches, you know, you need your ice baths, you need your stretches, you know, stuff like that. You need a... Uh, the gym time and everything. There is so much more. The preparation is like, I would say more than actually what, what yeah, well, obviously what you do in the match. The preparation is way, way more. Yeah. You spoke about lockdown just now. I could remember uh, Gotten Gambier and you had posted this on, on Instagram as well. He commented on the, one of your Instagram posts about look out for Kimo Paul, uh, the next. You had, some really inspiring performances of FIFA against Bangladesh. Uh, it's up there in terms of the, the record for West Indies. You, you had some innings with the part as well, but you haven't had that prolonged impact. I'm sure that you were looking forward to what's in store for Kimo Paul now that you're back in the West Indies set up as, as seemingly for a prolonged period as well. Um, well, yeah, I mean, speaking about Gotham, um, I have high respect for him, you know, I mean, coming from the Urban Super Giants in South Africa, you know, that is when uh, the assistant coach told me that, you know, Gotham wanted me at, at LSG and, you know, it was a really big opportunity and I must thank the franchise and especially Gotham by and uh, uh, VJ for, for that opportunity. It, mean, it, it meant a lot to me. Um, I think Gotham really, I would say he has impacted me a lot since coming into contact with him. You know, he has given me renewed motivation. The, the stuff that, that he has, has said to me and the belief that he has instilled back into me. I just want to go there and I know to myself what I can do. So, I mean, the past performances, I'm not really thinking about that, to be honest. I wanted to be a new Kimo Paul. I wanted to be a new chapter. I want to go out there and I want to put in consistent performances and it's not going to come just by talking. I need to put the work 
of the, for the working of the field and mentally also. So I think for me, the mental aspect was, was really, really lacking in, 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 my, uh, in my game. So like playing franchise cricket, playing different leagues in different conditions, you reach different people, you know, stuff like that. It has changed my viewing and stuff of cricket in general on a whole nother level. And like I said before, I think now I'm much more ready to play international cricket than I ever was. I want to go and play now. Like I know to myself, I will do well. Change how though? Change how to what? What was it before and what has this changed to? Um, no, well, like, like I said, the, the mental aspect, I think whatever you do, you have to believe in yourself 110%. You can't worry about the chit chat out there or what people might be saying or stuff like that. You know, it's all about you and believing in your ability and your process. I mean, everything won't happen the way you want, want it to happen or the time you want it to happen in. You know, it's all about a process and you just need to keep believing back in yourself. And like I said, again, the, the mental aspect, I think, is that the cricket is 95% mental and just 5% uh, physical, I, I would say. What, what happens, so I would ask this, how strong are you mentally then that even though you have the belief, we know you have the skills, but say you go out against UAE, say you go out to any qualifiers, and you, 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 you end with, uh, you go be bowler 10 over 12 or 70 with no wicket. Uh, what happens? How do you pick yourself up back for the next match? Well, you know, you just got to keep telling yourself you're good enough. And like I said, it's a process. Every game would not be good. You know, you, you won't bowl well, you won't bat well every game, but you just have to keep believing in your ability and your process. Like I said, I, I mean, um, if you could probably get someone, you know, you speak to, like, that motivates you, that, that, that would definitely uh, help, help a lot. So I'm not really bothered, to be honest, when I don't do well, because I know to myself, I, I know my capabilities, I know my ability and stuff like that. So when I have bad games, to be honest, first time, I used to let it bother me all the time. I, I would I go back. Sure. Yeah, I would go back to my room. I would throw thing. I would throw stuff around. I won't speak to anyone. Even my wife sometimes. She knows when I have a bad game. Before how it was. I would not want to speak to anyone. I would just be there and I would just beat myself up. But you know now I've come to realize like there's so much more to life than just. I mean it's just one bad game. Yeah? It's not the end of the world. At the end of the day, I get to go back and see my wife, my daughter, and. I've become so much more relaxed than, like, I would say, I just look forward to, to the other day, the next day. Like, it's a new day and you have life, things will change. So that's just how I view, how I view life and how I view even cricket. And, and has this renewed uh, vigor about outlook in life, has that sparked an interest in you to be a part of leadership as well even more? Definitely, definitely. I've always uh, seen myself as a leader. You know, I think that I'm someone that can lead. And I like uh, responsibility, you know? Like, what, what, what can I say? I mean, whatever team I'm in, I try to add input here and there whenever I'm asked to contribute and stuff like that. So I definitely think I have, I have le leadership abilities, yeah. So he's talking about leadership, looking forward to, to, to working with Che. Uh, I see two of you are quite fond on social media as well, it's just on posts and stuff, but looking forward to working with Shea and, and hopefully you guys can script a better chapter for West Indies cricket. Yeah, look, uh, Shea, I like Shea a lot, yeah. I respect Shea a lot and I, I I call him legend, like young legend, that's what I call him, yeah, because I think Shea is a phenomenal dude, a phenomenal cricketer. And we're quite close, you know, me and, me and Shea are, are quite, quite good friends, so. Um, I definitely look forward to working with Shea and I think Shea will lead us in the right direction. I mean, Shea works extra hard. I mean, he's one of the, if not the hardest worker on West Indies team. He's always in the gym. He's always looking to improve his game. And that's something that I look up to Shea about, you know, the way he goes about his business, how professional he is. So I think definitely Shea has that leadership ability. And I think once given the support and, and, and the back ends, I think definitely things things can go on, on an upward spiral. It's not just Shado, but there's Darren Sammy, who would have 
roped you away from the Amazon warriors and spoke really highly about you as the reason he brought you over to St. Lucia in the CPL. You're quite surrounded by a lot of people that think highly of you looking forward to as well to be with Sammy as a coach. Definitely, definitely. I mean, uh, like you said, you know, CPL, when Darren spoke to me and, and stuff, it was a big opportunity and, you know, I must thank him for that because I mean, Guyana released me and he was the one who backed me to get me into St. Lucia and even then, like during the games and stuff, he would motivate me, you know, like he would send messages and... It's kind of a comeback as well, a lot of injury. Correct, yeah, because I mean, I was coming back from injury then and you know, he was just backing me all the time. So I think, I think we have the right people around the setup to motivate and to push you and I mean, he, Darren Sami is a, is a modern day legend, especially in, in the West Indies, uh, because of what he has done. So I think he has great exploits, especially in the, in the white ball format. So I definitely look forward to working with, with, with everyone, with Sami, with Shea, you know, everyone basically. So, so reflective of your time in the game thus far, uh, marred unfortunately by injury. Going forward, what do you see yourself really offering uh, to the team? We hear a lot from the selectors about what you bring, but what is your role that you, you're looking to perform and execute for West Indies, at least in white ball cricket at this point? Um, well, yeah, I mean, going forward, I want, I, want to, I want to work my way up to being batting at a higher level. I mean, that's something that mm. I've put my mind to and I need to put the work in. And going back to even Gotham by, you know, he said, I mean, when he spoke to me and the things he said to me, like, you know, he, he told me, he said, he see me as once I put the work in, I can be the best around in the world. And I mean, I always told myself that even before he even told me that, but you know, like coming from an Indian legend and stuff like that, like I said, that helped, that helped to push me and motivate me. So going forward, I want to contribute more. I mean, I, I don't want to hear that, you know, Kim was a good around now or Kim can do this or Kim can do that. I want to put the workout on the field so that it shows, you know? I want, I want to bat better, I want to bowl better. I just want to contribute all around and be a, uh, I, I want to be a contributing cricketer. You know, I, I, want to, I want to be a stable force in the West Indies team. So that's what I'm working towards right now. You know, be, getting there and staying there and contributing, not just you know, do well one game and then months after. Consistency. Yeah, consistency is what I'm looking for. But how do you balance now the fact that when you begin to perform for West Indies, a lot of the franchises is going to come after you looking to get you into the team. Uh, it's a very a topical thing at this point in time, but how do you balance franchise cricket with this looking of offers, but also playing for the Maroon Colors? Um, well, playing, playing for the Maroon co Colors was always you know, like like my, my priority, like I always want to play for West Indies, you know. But like you said, there's lots of franchises now, there's lots of sub leagues and stuff like that. So I think it all comes down to availability, you know, and to get into franchise cricket, like to get into franchise teams is not easy. You need to be performing to get into franchise cricket. So, I mean, with good performances, lots of offers or whatever may come in the future, but it's just day by day for me, you know, that's just how I live my life. When that time comes, then we'll cross that boundary, so, yeah. That boundary may be sooner than you think are coming because there is a lot of talk at this point in time in the world about the, the IPL teams looking to, to hire some of you guys to be full-time on the on, on their contract list. Uh, is that something you, you may be swayed to or at this point still looking to play for Westmead as much as possible? Um, well, I mean, I'm just looking to play for West Indies and just play cricket right now, to be honest. That, that's, that's my main focus right now. Just, just play whatever comes at that time or whatever team I'm selected for. You know, whether it be West Indies, whether it be a franchise, whatever. I just want to play cricket, contribute, do well. And when stuff like that or wh whatever comes in the future, I'll discuss it with my family and with my wife and what's not, and then we'll probably make a decision, you know. Painstaking to say, you know, given, I know you know the history of West Indies, but uh, having to, to play the qualifiers uh, to, to an event that we would have had a rich 
vein and history at the start of it, how, how does that hurt you to know that the West Indies at this point have to be a qualifiers for a fifth over World Cup? Yeah, well, like you said, you know, West Indies had, had a rich history, or have a rich history in this format. And I think with time, everything changes. I mean, this is it's a new era, it's a new generation. I mean, West Indies cricket is probably not where the fans are not where the players even want it to be. You know, so it's all a work in progress. Obviously, it's tough that West Indies have to play the qualifiers. But I think by the hook or by the crook, we have to qualify. And, you know, going, going back to what you told, what I told you about Shea, you know, I think, I think he's he's gonna he's gonna be a really good leader, and I definitely think that going forward, we'll we'll get back there. It definitely will take time because of how everything is in the Caribbean, but we'll definitely get there. That's that's my belief. I think that one day we'll be a world a world a world power again. Yeah. I I can't uh, not ask you about. The, the most topical thing very soon, in a matter of months, uh, CPL and the Amazon Warriors. I'm quite certain that you're going to be back with your franchise, but that's a, a, a love story, Kimo, that, that, that seems not ending in a fairy tale fashion thus far. Uh, I know last year uh, you were gutted that the team didn't win, but what, what can you see possibly what's in story? I don't know what's the, the squad like, but yeah. I know you're going to be a part of it. Uh, what are you hoping to see this year happen? Yeah, well, hopefully I'm a, I'm a part of I'm a part of the Warriors uh, franchise. I mean, I love to represent Guyana. I love to play at the national stadium and play in front of these passionate fans. So I mean, CPL, it's always on everyone's mind, you know. And and even me, I'm always excited when CPL comes around. I'm super excited. Um, like you said, the the trophy has been eluding us uh, for a pretty long time. Should we run in the opposite direction? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> but I mean, everyone, everywhere you go, everyone asks you, "This is—is is this going to be our year? Is this going to be our year?" I mean, we don't know. Like it, it all comes down to whatever the creator <laughs> has in store for us. You this know, is what but, we know at this point. <laughs> yeah, but I think uh, we as the players, we need to do more, as in uh with performance wise, you know, we need to put in the performances. And I think once there's a proper structure and, and stuff, I think everything will fall to, fall into place. We don't know when, it could be this year, it could be next year, we don't know when, but we need to put uh, things in place to make that road easier. And I definitely know in the trophy will come, but I cannot say when this trophy <laughs> will come. Hopefully, Everyone I'll say hopefully thinks. again, hopefully it's this year. But definitely, everyone wants to win a trophy for Guyana, you know. Me, when me, Hetty, uh, Sheppy and these guys, when, when we speak, the passion is there. Like, you know, everyone wants to, to win a trophy for, for the people of Guyana and for ourselves especially, you know. Um, like, I've never won a franchise uh, tournament with, with any team. So, if I do it with, with Guyana for CPL, that would be a, a phenomenal feeling. I just was going to ask about that. Hetty, uh, Chauvin as well, and there's Romario Shepard now in the mix. How close are you guys and how much do you feed off each other? All of you are, are different parts in your career, a different part and different setup for teams, but still, how close are you guys and how much do you lean on each other? Yeah, I mean, all, all of the Guyanese mostly, I think we're very, very close. Uh, on me, especially with Shepi, Hetty, Chauvin, I mean, these guys like, like you said, we're all at different stages, uh, different parts in, in our career currently, but whenever we get together or whenever, it's all brotherly love, you know? Like, I have great respect for these guys. Uh, those, those are basically my, my brothers, you know? And like uh, with Sheppy especially, and Hetty especially, uh, we try to pinpoint uh, stuff in each other's game and see how we could better it and how we could work. I mean, that's something that me and Sheppy has been doing like in the IPL. We've just been looking at ways to improve our game. So if I see a flaw in his game, I'll tell him. If he sees something that he thinks I can improve, he'll tell me. So with, with everyone, that's how basically it is. Yeah. Life after cricket. Uh, you saw how successful uh, Stephen and John o, you know, are becoming. Uh, there are even other cricketers as well around the region, you know, Dre with his restaurants and, and Gail as well. Uh, I know it's still early days for you, you know, you're close to retirement, 
but I'm sure you'll be plotting life after cricket. Well, yeah, life after cricket has already started for me, basically, you know. I'm already thinking along that line and I already have things in place along that line. So, I mean, like, I'm happy I, uh, with the support system I have around me, you know. Like, I get really good advice and, I mean, I'm, I'm just really, really grateful. I'm still young, but, but um, like I said, you know, I'm already thinking and already have things in place along that line because life after cricket is way much longer than life actually play, playing the sport. So I look forward to life after cricket even, you know, I mean, I'll get to spend more time with my family, hopefully, and stuff like this. So definitely, yeah. Uh, hopefully we, we get to spend a lot more time in this soon. But before we go, Kimo, there's a lot of opportunities popping up in cricket. A lot of young Guyanese players are, I think they mean knocking at the doors and there's a lucrativeness of leagues and stuff like that. What advice would you give to them? Be uh, because a lot of them as well, when I speak to them, speak highly of you as a role model, uh, what advice would you give to them about how they can maybe plot their careers going forward, even life as well after that? Well, I would just advise them to stay humble, stay, stay grounded and be the hardest worker, you know, just keep, keep working. Like, that is something, whenever I'm around the guy in the team or whatever, that's something I always try to instill, you know, like, or offer advice. Like, I want to see the guys working hard because I want us to, to change the culture of West Indies cricket. You know, like, I want us to be different. I just don't want us to be these relaxed, contented cricketers. I want us to push ourselves and to be the best. So that's something that I always try to, to tell the younger guys, you know, like try to be the best man, whatever you're doing, just go out there, push, push, push every day and be humble, be grounded always, be disciplined, you know, like for me, I think that is something that my parents has instilled in me, you know, be humble, be grateful, get up every day and just, just time to create a health and strength and keep pushing. So. I just, I just want to advise them, you know, just don't focus on whatever is there. Just focus on day to day and the process. Everything is a process. I mean, you may be thinking about the financial gains and stuff. Everybody wants to be financially secure, but everything, like I said, is a process to get in there, you know? So every one time, every one time, like things don't happen for everyone at the same time. So just be happy for your brother, whatever, you know, if he's going up the ladder, just be happy for him and you work, you work in silence. Things will happen for you also. And I mean, life after cricket, you have to be smart, you know, obviously. If, if you're, uh, I mean, cricket comes with good financial gains, so just be smart in whatever you're doing, you know? Because like I said, the life after cricket is way much longer than the life in the sport. So that's just me basically what, what I would advise them. Well, I certainly hope they take your advice and all the best going forward to UAE and hopefully as well as you mentioned earlier that you can be able to play a key role in wrestling is doing well as qualifiers. So all the best going forward. Yeah, thank you, man. Okay.